I was growing up as a kid, my dad went every fall to Colorado to go mule deer hunting back in the 60s and 70s, and I, I couldn't wait till I got my chance to go and did about 1980 and been going back as many times as I can since then. And I know that different parts of the West, uh, hunting's not only under attack from uh, anti-hunting legislation and anti-hunters and things, but from the predator, the wolf, that you can tell people how bad it's devastating the, the big game populations in the West. Well, first of all, you know, Utah does not have a wolf problem yet. They stray down through there. We've trapped a few and, and whatnot, but we don't have a wolf problem in Utah yet. We have a coyote problem, okay? Now, I remember the 60s and the early 70s, and that's back when they used 1080 poisoning and, and all kinds of things to rid areas of coyotes. And that's back when the, the deer herds were strong. Now, people say that loss of habitat is the reason why our deer herds are suffering. That's only a small part of the problem. Because you can go out into the, into the western parts of Utah where nothing has changed in 200 years. It still looks the same way it did back when Kit Carson was running through the area, okay? Uh, and, and the deer herds just don't exist like they did, like, like they did back in the 60s. And so predation is a, is a huge, huge problem. And we have a very aggressive predator program in, in Utah where we put a $50 bounty on coyotes this year. $50. In present day. If you don't think that brought the old guys like me out of the woodwork real fast, <laughs> it did. And, and we've killed over 6,000 coyotes in Utah on that bounty program this year. Okay? We have gone into places like the Henry Mountains, which is the premier mule deer spot on this planet and with an aggressive coyote prog program and, and watch fawn survival rates increase 70% in one year, wow. 70%. So we have a predation problem, but the wolf problem, the wolf situation is, is something that is, is a whole different dimension. And I said it from day one, the, this wolf situation will go down in our lifetime as the biggest wildlife management blunder of our generation. You can, you can take that to the bank, okay? Now, first of all, what really gets me going is when people start talking about a wolf reintroduction, okay? What do you mean reintroduction? Wolf was never a native to, to the lower 48 states. There were a few that trickled down into uh, Wisconsin and, and Minnesota from, from Canada, but that's the Canadian gray wolf that was never native to the lower 48. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service stole $60 million from the Pittman-Robertson money to dump an, an illegal alien on us. The, 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 the Canadian gray wolf is an illegal alien that doesn't belong here. And they stole money to, to dump that animal on us. People should be in jail or, because of what they did. They broke the Endangered Species Act law by doing that. There should be people in jail for what happened. But the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has been infiltrated by individuals who are wolf lovers, and they got that accomplished. And as a result, places like Yellowstone Park that had 19,000 elk at one time is down to less than 3,000. It's very unusual to go up there now and see an elk, where, when before it was just, I mean, they were around every corner. Uh, moose hunting areas throughout Wyoming and Idaho and Montana, elk hunting, it, it, outfitters have been put out of business. There have been lies, lies, lies about, uh, about this wolf introduction program. They, uh, they said, okay, after we establish so many, we'll go ahead and, 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 and manage them. Well, it's been a war to, to, to get the, the states to manage them because every time the states want to implement a wolf management program, the, the, the antis, the wolf lovers, drag it into court. And, and that's where it's at. And, and so we're about an inch away from getting the wolf delisted. Okay, it's going to happen. But it had to be on a congressional level. It had to, go back, had to be done in Washington to get this thing done. And, and, and there have been some, some groups that are very active in making that happen. Uh, a group based out of Utah, Big Game Forever. One of the, I know uh, Ryan Benson, who who is a, a Harvard graduate law student, 
sharp as a tack, has put his life on hold to be the guy that goes back to Washington and camps out in Washington to get this legislation passed. Um, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation has jumped on board big time. These groups, uh, I, I just hope that, you know, the cows aren't out and we're closing the gate, so to speak, but at least, at, at least we're, we're, we've turned the corner. We're getting to a point where the states might be able to have the ability to manage these wolves. Now in Utah, we don't want a wolf in Utah. I mean, our legislature has basically said wolves aren't welcome in Utah. Now, if the, if, the, if the Mexican gray wolf comes up from the south, that's a different story. That animal is an a endangered species. But this Canadian gray wolf fiasco, it's exactly what it is. It's a fiasco. And every sportsman in this country should be outraged as to what has happened. Amen, brother. <laughs> <laughs>